Welcome to Late Night Research. Today, we go to the second biggest city in Belgium, Antwerp. Antwerp is known for having the second busiest port in Europe after Rotterdam in the Netherlands. But it's also known for diamonds. You see, the diamond trade has been going around in this city since the 16th century, and it has created a district with the foremost experts in these stones. So much so that 85% of all rough diamonds in the world pass through Antwerp's diamond district. Tiffany's Diamond Operations HQ, for example, is located here. So if you happen to own a diamond, it was most likely at one point either found, traded, and or cut here. If you're a criminal mastermind with this information, you would see an opportunity. This is what Leonardo Nortar Bartolo, the leader of the Italian thieves, the School of Turin, thought when he successfully stole a hundred million dollars worth of diamonds on February 2003, the crime of the century. Before the heist was performed though, there needed to be preparations, recruiting a team. The team consisted of Speedy, a nervous wreck, longtime friend of Bartolo Wildcard, the monster, the strong handyman, the genius, the god of the alarm systems, and finally, the king of keys, expert key forger. Now that Nortar Bartolo had the team, preparations were required. He first rented a small office space in the Antwerp World Diamond Center in order to get 24-hour tenant access to the building. Posing as an Italian diamond merchant, he would visit the center frequently, letting security become accustomed to his presence. In total, the robbery took 18 months of preparation. All members of the team had memorized the layout of the vault through a hidden camera they had placed in it, so they could work in absolute darkness. The police station was just 200 feet away of the vault, and the vault was protected with state-of-the-art security. But they were successful, and this is how it went down. The vault closed on Friday at 7 p.m., with Nortar Bartolo being one of the last people there. He sprayed hairspray to the thermal motion sensors to disable them temporarily, as well as tapping over a light detector. So, Saturday came in, and the team went in, and thanks to the hairspray, they could move freely through the vault. So they went directly to the tin box location where the vault key was located, information they knew from the hidden camera they had before. Once they grabbed the key, the genius cracked the code of the vault, and when they opened the door with the key, they had to act fast as any opening of the vault will send an alarm to the police. This alarm would be set up by two magnets separating when the vault opened. So the team taped the magnets together while cutting the bolts that held them, and bingo. After the vault was open without the alarm going off, everything was smooth sailing from there. They stole the goods, and for good measure they wanted to erase all evidence. So the Master of Keys created a special key that gave them access to every door in the building. So they stole the security camera footage, and went to the underground garage that allowed them to escape unnoticed. The next day, the police were perplexed on how this was possible, but a Belgian guy called saying he found some trash in his property. That trash was the key to finding the thieves. Speedy had a nervous breakdown when they went on the run and threw his evidence in the woods thinking it would be safer to throw him right there instead of carrying it all the way to the safe house. So all the team did as well, but the property owner was used to teenagers littering his property so he would go around looking for trash quite often. And this was their undoing. In the trash, police found some Diamond District documentations and a receipt for a sandwich of a local grocery store. They went to that grocery store and got the CCTV and identified the suspects and put them behind bars, except for the Master of Keys, who was never caught. Till this day though, most of the diamonds remain unrecovered and the sheer preparation, the amount that was stolen, plus the near-perfect execution is why this was called the crime of the century. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.